Hi everybody. It's Too Too Tuesday. Still can't turn my phone around, so this is um, going to be a quick one. It's called It's Time. It's time for us to stop all the nonsense. We've got to get with God's program and what he wants us to do. Um, you know, things are going to happen. I mean, it's just no joke. Things are going to happen. Um, we don't know. He already told us things are going to happen, but point is we got something to do and we need to get on with it. Um, and I want to tell you that, you know, there's a lot of things that we've already discovered. Um, there's a lot of things that God's already been showing us. He's been giving us dreams. He's been giving us understanding. He's helping us see the future. He's given us the ability to know, look into, window into what's coming and what we know. Yeah, there's a shaking going on. Yeah, things are going to go crazy. There's going to be things that may or may not happen um, depending on what we project or what we think about ourselves. But the fact is, God's still in control and he's still got a job for us to do and he knows what we're supposed to be doing. And so, so if we try and get our minds around or, or, or put our uh, all of our eggs in a basket of, well, we're going to do this or we're going to do that, the Bible says to say, if the Lord wills tomorrow, we'll do this or we'll do that. And so, you know, we're going to have to learn how to go with him and what he has for us to do and keep marching forward. And that means that we have to put our fear down. We have to put anxiety down. We've got to put all the junk down that we've been carrying around with us and trying to figure things out. It, they're unfigurable. I remember one time somebody told me, stop trying to make sense out of things that don't make any sense. And it was one of the most profound prophetic words I'd ever gotten from someone. And it was someone really that I hadn't really had, um, you know, I didn't, I mean, I hadn't really had a lot of relationship with. It was one of those moments, you know. And I feel like that's kind of what's happening. It's like, don't try and make sense out of things that don't make any sense. Um, God knows what's going on. He knows how things are going to shake out. And the thing that bothers me the most is that we, the people of God, the ones that should be leading in this moment are still wandering in the wilderness in confusion, trying to figure out what we should we do or what should we build or how should we do this. And you know what? Here's what, here's what God's looking at. You want to know what he's looking at? How do you treat each other? That's what he's looking at. He, he's not looking at your stupid programs and all the things that you think that you have to, to do or things to accomplish. Yes, you can plan, but you know what? In a moment's time, it could all be gone. What, what he's going to look at is how do you treat each other? How do, we, how do we respond to one another? How do we encourage one another? How do we consider with all the saints? How do we encourage one another in the days ahead, in the days that come? It says in, in the last days in Hebrews, it says, uh, gather yourselves together and all the more as you see the day approaching. Because it, gathering together and getting together and how we treat one another and how we pray for one another and we stand with one another and we don't try and judge each other for all the junk that people are going through. Everybody's going through something. But, you know, the fact is we're, we're, we're going to be God's looking at us. He's trying to say, what are you, how are you treating each other? What are you doing? How, are you acting like me? Are you, are you, does love cover a multitude of sin still? You know, d does it still cover wrongs? Does it still not keep any record of wrongs? Is it still patient? Is it still kind? Are we still able to, to encourage one another? Are we? You know, in Romans 12, it says, you overcome evil with good. Are we doing that? Are we overcoming evil with good? Because I don't think so. I think what's happening is that we're jumping on the bandwagon of everything that comes down the pike or everything that's set on the news, and we're not doing we're not even being a light in the dark place. And so this has to change, and it's time. It's time for this to change. We cannot allow ourselves to keep going on like this. And so I'm gonna encourage you, as a New Year's resolution or whatever else, yeah, there's gonna be some shaking things. There's gonna be some things that are gonna come down our pike. There's gonna be some things that we're not gonna be aware of, but you know what, God owns all the money. So we're not going to have to worry about finances. He owns all of the um, future, what we have to do. He knows the days that we have on this earth. He knows what's coming down the pike. He knows what the enemy's got planned. He knows how to deliver it to his servants, the prophets, because he says he, the Lord does 
the, surely the Lord God does nothing except he first reveal it to his servants, the prophets. And that's in Amos. And so it, it, he's going to get the message across to us. And with that, we're going to know exactly what to do. We're going to know where to stand. We're not going to know where to position ourselves and what he has for us in, to accomplish in this matter. I know for me, it's been really frustrating because everything I was doing is shut down. I mean, I can't go to the adult industry because they're on virtual, you know. Well, you know, but there's still people that are suffering with that addiction that are that are get, being drawn in and sucked into this whole hideous industry. So I have to find new ways in order to get a hold of them. And then uh, Burning Man, of course, is, is no longer happening. Or if it is, it's being reconstructed or God knows what's going to happen with that. But here's the deal. There's so many other places and people and in, in, in arenas and areas that God has taught us how to speak to the woke culture. He taught us how to speak to woke culture way before woke was even a thing. And I wrote it down in Words That Work, in the book Words That Work. This is what we're, this is what is happening. This is how you're able to navigate. You're able to communicate. You're able to bring comprehension to people who wouldn't listen to you using Christian words or any kind of religious language. And so get the book, get, get trained on how to deliver a message, how to give a message of hope, how to treat one another in public and everywhere else, you know? I just feel like we're being challenged. I think this is the biggest challenge we've ever had. The biggest challenge is when all hell breaks loose, when the waves come and they break and they come on the house. Either your house is built on a rock or it's built on the sand. And it says if your, if your house is built on the sand, which has no foundation and it's got nothing to, hold, to, to support it, it says the destruction of the house is great. So we're heading into some waters, but God is, he's in our boat. How's that? We're heading into some waters, but God's in our boat. And he's going to tell us what to do and teach us how to keep low. He's going to teach us how to, to navigate effectively and successfully and bring us through any troubled times that may come. It doesn't matter. When we operate in an opposite spirit, if you think about it, God's always opposite. He's opposite of the world. He's opposite in everything we're supposed to do. Every reaction humanly that we would have, he tells us to do it the other way. So we have to do things in, in the way he's designed things to do in order for us to move forward and you know, go and accomplish what he's given us to do. But mostly what he's looking at right now, it's time. He's looking at us to love one another. He's looking at his love to be shed abroad in our heart and that it flows out to everyone else. And that's what's going to get us through. That's what he's looking at right now. Can I trust you? The eyes of the Lord are going to and fro throughout the earth looking for somebody he can show himself strong. And if you forget about people quickly, if you, if you, excuse them and just don't have any value for them and you don't think about them or they don't pop up in your mind or they just don't you know matter or you don't reach out and you don't get a hold of somebody that when they've been on your mind for four or five days and you've just not done it well then now's the time to do it because obviously they're coming up in your mind for a reason this has been happening to me i'm just being real seriously honest with you because this is something that is real important. You don't, you know, we can't reach everyone, but we can reach the ones that God puts on our heart. And we can also ask God to put people on our heart that may be going through something. Even when you're going through something, you can still get a hold of somebody that's going through something. And oftentimes, just by you getting a hold of them, you feel the peace of God come over you. Because He wants us to be connected with one another. This is not a time to be isolated. It's not a time just to be an island onto yourself, you know? And so we're, we're, we're there. And I want to encourage you. I told you this would be short, but it's important. And I feel like that we're, we're moving into a time now where God's, we got to see what God sees. And we have to look at what he's looking at. And we also have to be available to change. Yeah. 
we're gonna have to be available to change. And that means that if he doesn't want us to be somewhere, we need to move on to where we need to be. If he wants us there, then we need to hang on and stick it out and allow God to form in us what he wants for us for the position that he has for us coming up here. Positions are already changing. There's already um, promotions coming. There's already demotions coming. So things are starting to happen that way. We're watching this take place. God's building his kingdom. His kingdom is still gonna come and his will still is gonna be done on this earth just like it is in heaven. And so, um, you know, it, the world is, is all messed up anyway. So that's why we've gotta be of sound mind. We have to at least bring some sanity into the confusion and into the mess. And so again, it's gonna be through, do you love people? Do you love God and do you love each other? Did you learn how to love? That's what Bob Jones was told when he went to heaven, you know, and God said, this is the one thing I'm gonna ask my people when they get here. Did you learn how to love? Did you? Because this is gonna be one of the biggest love tests we've ever had. So I wanna encourage you, I want to strengthen you, and I wanna say that we love you, that we're with you, we are, we are behind you 100%. There's going to be new assignments that God's going to give you to start. Don't be afraid to start them. He's going to give you new um, avenues of influence, areas of influence and favor. Don't be afraid to move into them and start taking the position. He's going to uh, navigate you through some hurt and stuff like that, and you just need to learn to get over your hurt and begin to live in a proactive way for us to see God's goodness spilled out on this earth, right? So there's gonna be things that'll, that'll offend your mind that will reveal your heart and they'll bring up roots of rejection and issues and everything else and we'll have to learn how to get rid of them. <laughs> We're gonna learn how to stop living there because it's not, it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that we have one person. I always think about that whenever I'm speaking or anything else. I only want to hear from one person, one, one. I have an audience of one. Even though I may be speaking to thousands of people, I have an audience of one. My audience is God. And all I want to hear is well done. That's all I want to hear. If, if it pleases God, you have one message and I have one audience. <laughs> and that would be him. And it's like, let's just do it his way and let's begin to move forward and, and, and get unstuck. I feel like we've been spiritually constipated. I feel like there's been all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I said that. I did. And I feel like that we've just been stuck in God knows what with everyone else's voice. And it's like, let's listen to what he has to say. People say, well, I don't know how to get that faith. I don't know how to get this and that. You've got access to the same Bible I do. You've got access to the same King of Kings that I do. You, you have the way to be able to move into wherever God has for you to do it. Don't be dragging yourself over to somebody else and try and get their oil. Get it for yourself. You know, this is the time of the, of the 10 virgins. You better learn how to get the oil in your lamp for yourself and learn how to hear him. It's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be good. We're in a good time. We gotta learn how to love each other though and, and stop this nonsense and stop getting in fights with people over nonsense, over literally nothing. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of evidence that's coming out now about certain things that have been forced on us. I'm not gonna be forced, you know why? Because I don't work for them. I don't work for the government. I don't work for people. I don't work for, I work for one, I work for God. I work for him and his kingdom and that's it. And so I'm gonna do it his way. You know, it's whatever it is. It's just, it, it, you know, it's, it's interesting. I gotta tell you this and then I'm gonna close. I went into Whole Foods, okay? And I had to drive to get there because here in Dallas, you have to drive 125,000 miles. It takes you six hours to go 45 miles or 30 miles or 15 miles, you know, because of the traffic and all the weirdness. And so I go into Whole Foods and I was looking at um, all these things and everything said organic, 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 organic. And so I said, well, so basically this store, I was talking with one of the workers in there and she's a sweet girl and I said, so basically in this store, you don't wanna put anything in your body. This Whole Foods is about organic things. You don't wanna put anything in your body that's not organic. And she goes, that's right. And I said, well, I'm gonna keep that in mind. And I said, I think we all should probably keep that in mind. Unless it's organic, it's not going in my body. 
anyway, it was really, it was kind of interesting. Um, and so I just want to tell you, <laughs> you know, I'm a bit of a, I don't know. Anyway, I just say what, what I have to say, but, but mostly I'm trying to tell you that we don't take our orders from, I have my orders from headquarters. And that's who I live my life for. That's who I live my entire life for. That's why I've done everything I've ever done. <laughs> I do it for him and him alone. If people like it and they gain from it, hallelujah, that's awesome. That's great, you know. And I'm hoping, hoping that I can train up people to do ministry and not be afraid. I'm trying to raise up teams. I'm trying to raise up an army of people who will say, I'm going to go with God. I'm going in this boat. Because I know I'll get to the other side if I'm in this boat. And I'm not going to be drug off into every kind of deception and every kind of weirdness and every kind of threat and whatever else, you know, that may come down my, you better do, you better get this, you better do that, you better, you know. I'm like, really? Well, I'm going to, I'll check with the boss. I said that at the porn convention. I'll, I'll check with, let me check with the boss and see if that's something that I need to be doing. That can be your answer anywhere. Let me check with the boss and see if that's something that I need to be doing. So anyway, all right. Well, um, I love it. I love that we're moving forward. I love that God's got us. I know these are the most exciting days ahead. I'm not going to stop. It's never been in me to stop. I'm not a quitter, <laughs> but um, I'm also pretty bold and we've got to get through this thing. And like I said, stop being spiritually constipated and everything. <laughs> I know I use that term. I like it. I think it works. It's pretty visual. All right. So I love you guys. Um, I will talk with you uh, next week. I'm going to be on, I think, Elijah's Dreams. I won't be using that phrase on Elijah's Dreams. But anyway, um, next week, I think I'm going to be on there. And then also, um, I'm going to be in D.C. Um, middle of January. So doing a conference up in D.C. I'll have the info on my website. And then I've got, I think, I don't know, we're going all over the place. We're, we're, we're mapping out our life. We're mapping out our plans, but God can change them at any moment. But mostly I'm going to try and raise up an army. I'm going to do training and teaching and give people words that work and dream interpretation and whatever you need in order to get a hold of other people where you're not a threat. So, all right. Okay. Love you. Um, go to my website, cindymcgill.org. Uh, sign up for the shout. Get the book if you haven't got it. Get the dream book. I've got another book I'm working on. <laughs> I've got a bunch of stuff coming down the pike. So, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to occupy till he comes. All right. Um, I love you, and we will talk with you soon. All right. Uh, watch Elijah's dreams. I think it's December 21st. I'll be on there. All right. I love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.